There you go, there's the first resume. So standard opening, name, address, phone, email, etc. Hey, it starts with an objective. So whoever sent us this has watched our shows before. Data analyst with experience working in fast paced and changing environments to deliver actionable insights. Seeking analytics role to leverage knowledge of operational efficiency and running day to day operations. Okay, the first line is fine, but isn't an objective. And then there's no comma. The first line is more like a summary. There's no comma. And then the second one um, is, uh, I'd normally consider it to be like, as opposed to period, comma, seeking analytics role to leverage knowledge. Up to that point, it's good. Operational efficiency and running day-to-day -day operations, you generally don't want to uh, repeat words and that doesn't tell me much so data analyst with experience working in fast paced and changing environments to deliverable actionable insights sounds great seeking analytics role to apply these skills to make um, a critical difference or to to deliver critical changes or to drive critical decisions is how i would write that uh, no, people don't make a decision based on a comma. People make a decision on whether or not they can read the damn thing. So, <clears throat> no, I'm not trying to criticize use of commas, uh, Yogino. I'm trying to make sure it's readable. Uh, indented headings are rough on the eyes. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Um, I love the fact you're all commenting, though. Um, so, please, that's and I like the splash of color, Homer. I agree with you. Uh, matchstick man thank you for the sub <laughs> sub for nine months a sub baby i like it uh all right let's keep going what else is in here um so we talk about our analytical experience um which is interesting should be like your data analysis experience but whatever um <clears throat> Marketing analytics supervisor at some company led a team of four plus staff analyzing marketing for pharmaceutical agencies. Okay, repeat after me, chat. What should be at the end of this line? I'll give you an I'll give you a hint. It starts with an R. Wait for it. Wait for it. Perpetual white belt. First to the buzzer. Yes. No results. You led. You led the four plus staff analyzing marketing for pharmaceutical agencies. To what end, to what point, to what value? Who cares? What did you do for me? I'm paying you. <clears throat> Validate, interpret, and communicate results across teams to develop insights and recommendations. <sighs> um, this is all fine, but you don't really tell me your impact, which is the results. And you don't really tell me what you did or the business or much about it. The only number in this, like you're an analytics person, and the only number in this is that there were four people involved. So, uh, you know, Pentaquant is here. His name is Quant. <laughs> where's the Quant in this, right? So as a data analyst, like, where's your data? You're trying to present yourself to me as a very analytical person and what you're doing in your second bullet is blabbing at me with happy words um, that don't really say anything. Validate, interpret, and communicate results across teams to develop insights and recommendations. Like, who doesn't? Yeah, you know, my dog does this. Um, and yeah, I'm being harsh. That's why we have the assassination icon. Um, oh, furrow key, rocking this staff wrench again. I love it. Our longtime follower turned glorious intern. By the way, the other things, I'm finishing my dinner, and these are yam fries. Mmm, yummy. No calories, better than French, almost no calories, better than French fries. All right, live operations at a gaming company. Executed sales strategies daily to drive player engagement and monetization for a 30,000-player, multi-million-dollar revenue mobile game. It's interesting that 30,000 players could generate multi-million dollar revenue. Just on math, that means each one's giving you like 100 bucks. It's possible. Do you mean 30,000 active players? <laughs> you thought it was a cigar. It's an edible cigar. Mm. 
But a cigar would go with the resume assassinations. So what else do you see here, chap? What else should we say about this resume? Conducted and analyzed A-B tests using SQL. So that previous bullet was pretty good. Like I did this thing for this many people with this much money. Um, you'd make it better by saying how much your sales strategies generated or the lift you generated, etc. But you do say in the third bullet that you improved revenue 20%. Um, and, you know, that you interviewed, hired, and onboarded new team members. That's good, too. So, overall, it's a pretty good section. Hmm. Okay. Um, for an exchange analyst, extract, clean, and analyze market data across multiple trading instruments using Python. Uh, build original statistical model. Create automated trading system. Again, there's nothing on results. So you're a foreign exchange analyst is a hobby. Great. Give me something. You've told me your activities, which is good. You haven't told me the results. <laughs> Professional experience. I'm a chief train dispatcher. Um, issued monitored track authority for up to 20 train and track crews. Time sensitive, detail oriented environment. Good. Um, completed additional ad hoc reporting for leadership while maintaining the lowest incident rate for the company. If you can state the incident rate, that's better. Um, or what the ad hoc reporting is about that's better. Basically, details. Give me something as specific as you can. Huh. Fuzzy Elf, uh, Fizzy Elf thinks it looks clean. That's all you got. Uh, Perpetual White Belt and, I think, Pentaquant both dislike the alignment. And I certainly agree, by the way, it's a total fail to have... And I got to be fair to this person. It is a PDF. But I'm hoping it's an artifact. Having like some things indented and in purple and some outdented and in black. And then the big bullets. It's got bullet overload. And I don't mean that in a good like Call of Duty, I have lots of ammo kind of way. Um, it, it needs some work on the formatting. It's not going to make it or break it. But I agree. I, I kind of ignore formatting because I'm just trained to read the resume. But this one, the formatting is bad enough to be a distraction. So you probably want to change that. Um, Co-founder, product manager of a software company. Led weekly scrum with a team of developers to create computer-aided train dispatching software. Cool. Designed product specifications, including software logic and UX design, resulting in software that's helped the customer dispatch over 800 miles of track. So here you've fallen into the, uh, what's the boomer comment for okay? That the bullets are distracting me or the cod comment? <laughs> All right, fine. Anyway, you're right. Um, So what else we got here? We're here you've fallen into something that the problem is it's only meaningful to people in the industry. Like literally what your language says in English is that you created software that helped the customer send 800 miles of track somewhere. And that isn't clearly what you've done. You mean like help the customer manage dispatching on a network of over 800 miles of track, just realize that you're writing to someone who probably doesn't know anything about trains. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a little bit weird to divide your experience into analytics and other, and particularly to label this one professional. Like, was your analytical experience not professional? I would tend to say you want to combine this into one set of chronological experience, put the foreign exchange stuff, the hobby at the bottom, and have it just be your professional experience and trust in the fact that your last two jobs were analytical to carry the fact that you want to be a data analyst. Finally, you have your skills at the bottom, standard skills section. You have your education at the bottom, standard education. No big deal. Okay, chat. Let's have fun. Engagement. Overall, how do we score this? 
What's the grade? We give these letter grades. A, B, C, D, F. You can put a plus or a minus on it, but, but I won't reveal my grade until I see at least five grades in chat. I'm glad people like the purple. It's very Twitch purple. All right, we're getting a range. Consensus is B, B, plus, uh, B, B minus, C. Um, so what are the deductions? The deductions are hinky formatting, lack of results, particularly on your opening bullets. Okay, this is important. Um, resumes, you earn the recruiter or the hiring manager's attention from the top down. So the most important part of your resume is here. It's these first few lines. What do you want to do? Are you any good at it? <clears throat> I chose to read the whole thing because I'm doing you a favor reviewing it. But realize you can lose a reviewer right at the top. And so it's super important that if you're going to get something right, get the opening right. The rest of it, the bottom of your resume, it's good to have right, but people make up their decision like that, and then they validate it to themselves. It's important to understand about human psychology. We all like to believe that we make objective decisions, and those decisions, we like reason our way to them. What we actually do is make snap-biased, instant, bigoted decisions, instinctual decisions, and then justify them to our rational mind. Um, and if you don't think that's true, just go talk to somebody who cheated on her, his or her wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, whatever. They all have a story about why, but it was really just they wanted to. And then they made up a story about why it was okay. So um, same thing here. You got to get the top of the resume right. And so on that basis, the week opening, I'd go more for a C+. Plus. The rest of the resume is pretty good. The overall resume, it's clean, it's one page, it's to the point, it usually gets to results, just not in the opening bullets. I don't think it's a hard fix to get it up to AA minus, um, but I wouldn't start it there. So anyway, I would give it a C plus in the end. Uh, as otherwise, it's just like, yeah, all right, where's the recent stuff? So where's this other resume? So we're doing one more resume. It's helpfully titled Resume 3. So this one's a two-pager. Some of you can vote against it right from then, but I don't penalize for that. This person anonymized it. You have to imagine that their name is only one line long. And let's get into it. HR administration, process innovation, talent acquisition. So doesn't say objective, but that's the places or, or things the person works in, which is could be fine. Key subject matter, expertise, and skills. Um, immediately connect using... So I've talked about this before. I don't like these sections this way. And here's why. This is you babbling to me about yourself, not me helping, not you helping me know whether or not you can do things. So I don't like the babble about yourself sections very much, and they need to be crisp. There's no data in this at all. There's not a single number. There's not a single accomplishment. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, somebody says uh, it's bullshit filler. Um, and yeah, so Crapster is, is the author here. So we need to be not, not, no, we should be slightly nice. But the problem with this is, most people lie on resumes, uh, at least a little bit, and they may not lie intentionally. They simply embellish with all the good things and leave out the bad things, which can feel like lying. And so the point here is you may not be intentionally lying, but you're just telling me a bunch of stuff you believe about yourself, and I have to go figure out if I believe them. And so I'd much rather just start with what the hell have you done or a couple quick lines that include some key numbers. This is just you making eight claims about yourself that I have no idea if they're true or not. So pretty much I skim over them. And to the point I made on the last resume, you know, I'm already like, oh boy, a babbler. 
Um, <clears throat> now, I'm harsh. That's why I'm the resume assassin. Uh, but career history. HR intern, part-time, February 2020 to present, HR Consultancy, Canada. Sourcing a talent pipeline for current and future vacancies using various, always a weak word, sourcing strategies to ensure efficient and high-speed delivery of quantity quality candidates when required. So it's, again, it's long, it's wordy, it doesn't tell me what got done, and various sounds like, I don't know, random, assorted, miscellaneous, Mostly I surf the internet. You're trying to give me a sense of what you do that's, um, yeah, somebody says, yay, fancy words. You, you want to be more factual and direct, more impact-oriented. Remember, you're getting hired to solve a problem for me. And here you don't sound like you're solving a problem. Um, and by the way, going forward, we're only this is a special catching up on history. I'm only going to do one resume a stream just because it takes too long to do two and slows us down from getting to the main show. But I do love to do them and it's fun when chat chimes in. So we're gonna have an opening ritual for a while of always doing one at the start of every stream. And also, if you want them done privately and offline, I do private resume reviews in exchange for a donation to my favorite charity. So you can reach out uh, through my website uh, if you ever want that and you, you just can't undergo the, uh, you know, pillage and burn that we do as tradition here. So some people prefer that. I'm doing one right now for a young guy out of uh, California. So. Pachi also says people review them in Discord. Our community will do the same thing I'm doing only there. So let's keep going. Co-founder Wanton Streetwear Vintage. Uh, clothing line in Ireland. That's kind of cool. This fact, Ireland. You wonder why it came and went in only six months. Um, but you develop this website. Again, there's not a single number in here. I realize you're applying for an HR job or, or talking about being an HR, but there's not like a single quantifiable fact, which just makes it really hard for me to know. There's also, you say you made a website, but there's no URL. Nothing is hot linked. Um, so I'm, I'm left struggling to verify what you've done or get any sense that it's real. It's not that you're necessarily lying. It's that someone else, I have this other resume where there's lots of data and everything's verifiable and the accomplishments are clear. And it's like, hey, come look, check me out. Um, this doesn't have that. Uh, Facebook SEO is above the website URL and also the website homepage is 404. Okay, you must have, was it up here? All right. Oh, there was a link at the top. Got it. Um. Okay, uh, Dublin University honors human resource management. That's cool. Uh, worked in Canada for a little while in QuickBooks. Um, yeah, so, oh, let's see. Worked in a hotel in Ireland. Is there anything to say about that? Engaged with all see, engaged with all employees. Your first bullet is weak. Um, what did you actually do with them? Engaging with them is not interesting. And even worse, assigned work groups is like you're sounding very administrative here, which I get, but these are all weak words. Engaged with, supported, completed required HR process. I realize you were an intern, but you definitely sound like an intern. Like the thing that you don't want to sound is like, and wash the manager's car. And it's perilously close to you being a gopher. You really want to have impact. Also, somebody who says reduced to a single page. Um, I don't always say single page is required, but you're a new college grad with some internships. A single page is required. Feeling you need two pages to describe your internships is just not true. Uh, be more impactful. Have a higher filter. All right, Twitch, uh, Twitch chat, let's grade it. We got 90 people here. We ought to be able to get 20 grades out of this. A, B, C, D, F. What are we giving this resume? Um, NVA Hitch asks, while the grades come up, um, what if that literally was your um, impact? Uh 
you find a way to talk about why it mattered. Freed the boss's time by taking care of, of key tasks to allow boss to, you know, he's saying he had to wash the car, to allow boss to focus on critical meeting. You find a way to turn it into why it mattered. This part about like engaged all the employees, right? You, you turn it into why it mattered. Um, at the hotel, um, uh, met all employees to ensure job satisfaction and understand any problems in daily operation. But you, you make it into an impact. Why did it matter? All right, cool. Um, so I'm going to give this one like a D. I'm with Sean123. This one isn't quite a failure, but it needs a lot of help. It needs to go to one page, needs some numbers, needs some impact. Um, and Crapster is trying to find a job and struggling. Uh, you invest some time in this. Uh, so, and Costco Pizza, same thing. Too many words, too many words. People don't like to read. Steve Jobs said it. People don't read. <laughs>